What up, everybody? One Speed Podcast coming to you from Dante Trader and Bo Bray. UMD starting linebacker Ruben Hippolyte. We young, we young and tired. What do you mean? We young and tired. You always start with a quote of the day. Be it's either like one speed or not at all for real. Worry about yourself and your production. It's about knowing the guys you want to take the field with. You want to work and say it all in one word. Right. Aloha. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of One Speed Podcast. Here with your host, Dante Trader and Bo Bray. And he was a guest on our last episode, but now he's joining us on the episode, I mean, as another host, but special guest we got with us, Talia Tungvaloa. Appreciate you having me on. Appreciate y'all for having me on. But before we get into the episode, we always start with the one speed quote of the day, and that is, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I mean, that's a testament to what we're doing right now. I mean, I feel like... uh, just joining with my guys, like if we gonna if we gonna go up, we gonna go up together. Uh, we teammates on the field, we gonna be teammates off the field. Uh, it's all about you know um, unit success, in my opinion. So um, yeah, the last episode I was on, I just you know had a great time, and you know why not go together? So we here now, doing it big. So let's get into it. You know, island boy from Hawaii. You know, what's yes, what's the biggest difference from you know hometown Hawaii? To you know, mainland. I mean, it's a. I think uh, it's like a culture shock. Every state you go, I feel like I. I've been to Cali before. It's like a different life over there, and I've been to Alabama now over here. It's just a big difference. Like the way I grew up, you know, it's five minutes away from the beach. Like everyone lives close to the beach, and uh, it's like everything I did uh, growing up, whether it's going to school, going to the park any football game, it was always like 20 other people are coming with me because like it's family everywhere, you know what I mean? Right. So that was different when I came up here, you know, because I didn't have my family, like my cousins and stuff like that. I just had my sisters and my parents and my brother. So I think that was probably the biggest difference. Yeah, man. I know like, especially all really family oriented, you know, family's everything. Um, you know, you touch on that, you know, as we see, how family-oriented you guys are, your family is, you know, I know your culture is too. I know, you know, Chow's talked about that before. And, you know, we see your family at every home game, sometimes practice and stuff, you know, your family's out there all the time. So, you know, can you touch on that, you know, cultural uh, aspect of y'all? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, being like, you know, being full Samoan, uh, growing up, you always had the, uh, the head of the household. And, I mean, it's always obey your parents. You know, you never go against the word. And uh, you also listen to the oldest, like your oldest cousin. You never talk back to him, even though we, we yeah. all do. But yeah. kind of like your brother, you know, your brother is the next man in line if your dad's not in the house or something like that. So mm-hmm. it's like very structural, cultural. And um, I think my family, my especially my parents and my grandparents did a really good job, I feel. And um, I feel very fortunate to, you know, be full Samoan and blessed and stuff like that. But yeah, family's everything, and um, that's why coming out here, it was you know different coming to the mainland and stuff like that. It was different because I feel like I didn't have that that culture around me no more. You know, I feel when I went to school in Hawaii, you know, I I also went to school with a lot of Samoans, a lot of Tongans, a lot of Polynesian people. Mm-hmm. So I'm always around the culture. You know, what I mean, we all grew up around the same type of. You know, we live under the same structure, household rules. We go to church every Sunday, listen to your parents, stuff like that. And then when I came to the mainland, it was it was so different because, you know, you, you barely see Polynesians now. So right. it was different, but, like, the whole cultural, cultural thing, yeah, I feel like it's always family-based. I saw my dad, you know, I try to do everything I can. I asked Locks if he could come to our uh, practices and stuff right. just because that's what he wants to do. And yeah. I try to do everything I can to... You know, make them happy. So yeah, um, I feel that. Um, I don't know to your extent of you know how family oriented, how that structure that you have in that Samoan like culture. Like I just see it with you and Chow and all them boys, and it's like you know, I I thought I was you know deep into my family and like I am, but like I look at y'all, like y'all really like com- connected and like not having that you know when you come over here to College Park, like is that is that hard for you? Was that a hard adjustment or was it like, you know, I'm a call away, your parents are so loving and easy and accessible, they fly down here or something like that? Yeah. Um, I think it's, 
in the beginning, it was really hard just because, you know, I'm living on my own. I've never been away from my parents, you know, for a time, for this long. But I think the, the thing that makes it the easiest, you know, for the whole transition and stuff like that, I feel like is the football team. You know, us boys, the locker room, we all got to sacrifice our family time for something we all want, you know what I mean, together. So I feel like all those things make it easier. Obviously, my parents, I mean, they're always up here for every game, like you said, uh, especially during the season. Um, they come up here for the spring game. Sometimes he likes to watch spring practice um, just because that's the only time they're really free and we're both not in season, you know, me and my brother. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So you, you touch on the locker room, and I think, um, like, a lot of people who are outside, like, outsiders, they don't really understand, like, the connections and the relationships that are in the locker room. Like, that's, some, that's just, like, very sacred and special amongst yeah. all of us. So when you talk about your family and you talk about your upbringing, like, what are some of the things you incorporate, you know, in the locker room with, you know, the guys and, like, with us, like, that you, you know, have taken from your family? into the locker room to incorporate, you know, that family bond, that family culture, like, amongst the team? Um, I think the, I could say it all in one word. Right. Aloha. Right. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I think that's the biggest thing I try to bring to the locker room, you know. Try not to be that quarterback who, who's real Hollywood or yeah. doesn't talk to anyone yeah. or, you know, does his own thing and stuff like that. I feel like the biggest thing for us, just like my family, like my dad, he was no favoritism yeah. at all to anyone. He doesn't care who, how good you are, who you are, stuff like that. He yeah. just, we're all, you know, you should be humble. And I feel like that came with, you know, me, my background growing up, always being humble, always showing love to everybody. So I feel like when everyone's connected, everyone's more comfortable. And I feel like the more comfortable we are, the better we can play and relate and communicate, which is, I feel like, the biggest thing. So. Right. That's good. You know, you know, so talking about, you know, locker room and culture and football, what really, like, who in your family really got you, like, started with football, you know, at a young age? Um, me and my brother always talk about this. Like, we felt like we were forced to play football. Yeah. Football. <laughs> <laughs> and I got uh, the same story. Yeah. Same, same way. We didn't want to play football. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we, we always, our family is a football family. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we grew up playing football at a young age and stuff like that. And I was playing center. So, like, yeah. I looked up to my yeah. uncle. Yeah. But my uncle played for the uh, Hawaii, University of Hawaii. Yeah. And that's when they were lit, bro. Like, June Jones was their coach. And they went, like, 10-0 and 0 one year. Like, they was lit. Right. And my uncle was the center. And he wore number 59. So I'm telling myself, like, I want to be like him because he's in college. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and he's from my family, like that's crazy. Yeah, so like, that's a good flex right there. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, I played a uh, center, but my dad, he was really focused on my brother. My brother was, he was one of them growing up, bro. I can't lie, like everyone in the neighborhood knew, like we want him on our team, like, yeah. we want two on our team, like. Yeah. And I was like that too. I didn't, I was a center, bro. I was all time <laughs> center. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was not athletic. I was not none of that. Like my brother had all that. So, like, growing up, I was always doing that. And when I was uh, probably in the fifth grade, I was, like, really overweight. So, like, I couldn't play with my, my age group. I, I couldn't meet the weight for, it was, like, 105 pounds, bro. Right, yeah. And I'm, like, 150, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. So, like, my dad told me, like, to play with my older brother then. And that's when stuff got serious, like, right. you know what I mean? Like, you got to really lock in with them big boys and stuff. So... I was snapping to my brother, like, as a young. So after that, I told my dad, like, yeah, I can't lose weight, and I don't want to play with them older boys. Like, they're too big. Like, this, right. no, nah, it's not for me. Like, I got to stop. Like, and then my brother, I'll never forget this, bro. It was at a townhouse. And, uh, we should sleep in the living room, like, on the front. But we had, like, Every household, your family member live with you. So, like, I always had my auntie living with us. Yeah. So, like, he, she had, like, five kids and then our family, like, you know what I mean? It's right. a jam-packed house. But, like, we was sleeping on the, uh, in the living room. And he was telling me, like, oh, why'd you tell dad, like, you don't want to play? Like, I'm like, bro, my body hurt. Like, <laughs> my neck, like, bro, I'm right. too young for this, bro. Like, you know what I mean? 
And he was like, bro, I need you to, I need you to, to snap to me, bro. No one else is gonna snap to me. This and that. I was like, bro, there's a lot of people you can snap. <laughs> right, to. Right, like, right. I'm young, bro. <laughs> but I'm not ready for this. And he was just telling me like, bro, come on, let's go snap outside. Right. So he started snapping outside. He started like toughening me up, like pushing me down and stuff like that. And like. He made me hate it so much that I ended up loving it, bro. Yeah. And then I started, you know, he, he was my role model. And I started looking up to him. And then when he went to high school, I wanted to become a quarterback. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And then I told my dad that. And really, everything just took off from there. So I really felt like it's my brother. Right. That's what's up. My brother. So you started playing quarterback, like, right before high school? Well, yeah. My first year I started was my eighth grade year. That's crazy. High school. Nah, that's, 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 that's wild. Really you were playing the quarterback position. That's crazy. I want to play. You was playing center, bro. <laughs> right. Yeah. We. Crazy. I ain't even know that. I'm your teammate. Like. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? That's right. Crazy. For real. Yeah. Like, you know, you said you said your dad kind of like forced or your family like forced you to play football. Like, and Ruben was kind. He didn't like. He didn't like football. And oh, yeah. I just want to, you know, credit because do you feel like. You know, that helped you now? Like, oh, do you thank your father for doing that or your family or your brother? Like, oh, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I didn't want to play football, but I know I don't have a choice. <laughs> it's like, you know, whatever my dad says, that's what we're doing. Yeah, that's what it goes right or wrong. Right. But I definitely do thank my dad a lot for that. And like, football is the, like, uh, the sport of life, bro. Like, I play basketball sometimes and like, I can't believe how, like, not physical it is, bro. Yeah. Like, I can't, like, <laughs> every little fair. touch is like a foul. It's like, like all finesse. Yeah, yeah. But, like, football is like, grown man, bro. Yeah. Right. Grown, grown yeah, man. hard, fall, and get back up. Right. Right. Man. And oh. you need everybody, bro. <laughs> you need everybody. Well I'm, well, I'm glad your dad forced you to play, because <laughs> right. you, you helping it up, us. Uh, if any of y'all don't see how this man plays or performs on the film, just know. Like, he played like he don't got a choice. Right. Like, he, he, he played, he, like, this man played <laughs> like he, like he, like his pops forces him to play. Like, he's like, I don't got no choice. I'm going to put put it all on the line. And Leah really does that. He embodies yeah, that. So, right. I mean, how does, you know, the University of Maryland, you know, we've had Frank Wright, we have Boomer Eisen, you know, good quarterbacks. You, you know, you up there, you the top for real, you know, you get, you're leading in every single passing category. You know, how does it feel to be looked at as the GOAT, but also, like, you you know, you're that guy? Um, bro, it's it's a blessing. And I think uh, the biggest blessing I get out of it is, you know, my parents. Like, you know, when they come, they get that attention. You know, it brings a, it puts a smile on their face. But I feel like uh, me feeling like, you know, I'm the guy I'd, really never want to feel like that because I know uh, I always say it to everyone that the receivers and the O-line they make me look good bro and I know it's like a cliche saying but I mean we see the film bro there's a lot of straining going on there's a lot of work they have to do to get open and catch the ball in traffic make high pointing the ball and stuff like that it's running backs making blocks bro and it's it, like I said football is a tough sport and, you know, it's just uh, different that, you know, it's a blessing for me that I get the, you know, the, the credit for, for all those things. And, of course, there's hard work that I put in and there's hard work that, you know, we all put in together. And that's the, you know, that's the only way it goes. But, you know, I try to stay as humble as possible, right. as humble as I can. And I know that all these blessings, bro, is from God, bro. Because look at my story. I was a sinner, bro. I was a sinner. Right. <laughs> And you know you you, you touch on you touch on God and you know I, I know you're big on your faith like you know you and I talk about it a lot um, personally and like, every time you score like I see what you do in the end zone and then but you know w you know with your faith comes passion as well like you're a very passionate player like and, and you love the game clearly like we see it day in and day out um, you know on the practice field in the game and you know looking back on last season like you know playing Michigan. You get a first down, make, make something happen for the offense, get up, you know, you start screaming first down and stuff like that. That's And that's just one example of your passion being shown. So, like, is that a switch that you have where you turn it on when it's game time and then turn it off when you, you know, come around, like, off the field? Or, you know, is that something that sticks with you, you know, throughout every, you know, part of your life? Yeah, I feel um, 
that passion is just, I feel like it's just a switch, yeah. you know, like it's a switch on the field. Um, you know, you, ch- you want to prove yourself right, prove others wrong. And, um, you know, it's a lot of uh, built up things going on throughout the week. You know, you studied your butt off, you know, you work your butt off. And now it's like so much excitement to show what you worked on and stuff right. like that. So I feel like all that stuff is very, uh, yeah, I think it's just a switch. Like when I get on the field and stuff like that, I'm very passionate. Um, and it helps when, you know, I got guys around me that's just as passionate or more passionate about trying to win and playing physical and stuff like that. And right. um, back on the fate topic, fate is the the biggest thing to me. And I feel like that's where I get my confidence from. Yeah. That's where I get my peace from. And uh, I feel like if my, my head is right, and oh yeah, I feel like if my head is right, then, you know, I'll, I'll be good. And the only way I could, I could be like that is if, you know, I'm, I'm right with the Lord. Right. No, for sure, because you, you had me screaming in my seat, because I was here at the time. So yeah. I was at home while them, uh, them boys was at Michigan. Oh, yeah. Um, you're dropping back. I'm like, all right, man, like, we got to do something with the ball. You take off. I'm like, go ahead, get that first. He get up, he start screaming. Like, I had a high ankle sprain, so I'm, I'm trying to get up. Like, Let's go. So I'm like, ah, I got to sit back down. So, nah, fam, but definitely, like, you know, on the practice field, uh, I see that uh, in the game. We see that, and, like, it's just a blessing to be able to compete against you, like, day in and day out. And then, you know, see that transition to the field and just, you know, know we're a part of that process. So, so sure likewise, dog, my man. boy. Yeah, most definitely. Most See, that that play, like going back to it, like people kind of confuse that. Like you know, you got some hate for it because you know, uh, like acting yeah. out of character, right. like just you know, give the ball to the ref, big game <laughs> moment. But like people don't understand what goes into that play. Like everything has to be right for you to get that play. Like we looked upon. Like you just made a big boy play. You oh okay, you gonna you gonna perp a little bit. Right, and it's right. like they don't know what you go throughout the week to even get to the game. And that's right. that's everybody think it's just oh I like Leah being cog. Nah, man. You don't see what we see throughout the week. Like yeah. this man literally does not go home in, in the season. Like running sprints after, throwing the receivers after, like I'll look out the window. I'm eating I'm eating dinner and he's still out there. Like <laughs> no, I, really, I'll right. see his backpack out there. I'll go down to the film room. I'm like, yo, he's still Still in here, you're gonna film him. Look at his notes, like every breakdown, everything, like, and you see why, like, he'll be the most frustrated after a couple of bad plays. He might have a good drive score, a touchdown, he'll be mad about something little. Like, that just speaks to who he is. Like, people need to understand who this guy is. Like, there's a reason why he has all these records. Like, man, quick story we had a scrimmage this past spring, like, I wanna say, like, a couple weekends ago, and like, we were supposed to meet up, and then I get a text, like, like 30 minutes before you're supposed to meet up. Oh, yeah. Leah's like, fam, I can't make it. I'm like, oh, what you mean you can't make it? Why you, why, what you mean you can't make it? Like, right. like at least tell me day before so I can. <laughs> He's like, I, I, I got to study the script. I'm like, for the scrimmage? He's like, yeah. Then he sent me a screenshot of the script. Or he showed me the next day. Scrimmage, <laughs> it's like, it's like this long and like all the um, alerts and adjustments and like everything, bro. So, Look, like, the dedication all, is real. If like, y'all didn't real. beat us on Thursday practice, we would have been straight. Right. <laughs> y'all, bro, y'all was on us, bro, on right. Thursday. So, coach got mad. I was like, nah, study. Right, for sure. Oh, no doubt, bro. Yeah, bro. So, I was, I mean, I know every day when we have, like, practice or anything, you know, it could be spring or in the fall. I remember, like, any practice, boy, you just, you think you garden, like, you on top of it, garden, whatever. And then he looking this way, you in zone, you start going that way, then uh, no look. I'm just like, bro, what? Yeah, it's like, it's just, it's just crazy, man. Like, prime, another prime example, it's so many stories that we have, bro, but like spring game, a little seven on seven period. Man, uh, I think we in, I think. I oh my, yeah, I've heard like, we in the red zone, seven on seven red zone, seven on seven period. Zone, seven on seven period. Uh, I think it's over at a post or something. I'm, I'm reading Leah's eyes. I'm, I'm, I'm slow pal. I'm like, okay, he gonna throw it. He gonna throw it. He, I'm right on the hash. He gonna throw it. He throw it right above. Like he just know where to put the ball at, bro. Like that's his talent. It's just you can't coach that, bro. Like you feel me? So, uh, right above you, right in front of me. Right. This is crazy. Right. So, bro. Yeah, man. I have to be like that because y'all going to pick it. Bro. Right. Bo got like five picks this spring, right. bro. Right. Bo we, be break, bro. We I'm like, y'all make me a lot better, bro. That's love. Bro. And, it's just like, 
is just all of us just working like to yes, the best man. of our ability, you know. Like it's you being a dog, you know. This year we got dogs in the DB room. We got dogs in the linebacker room. Last mm-hmm. year we had two corners that went to the draft, you know. Right. Iron sharp and iron for real. Right. And we can do it, bro. Yeah. Going off of that. What? After all you just did, you the humble guy. What is there? What is what's next for you? Like what is what are you trying to accomplish bro. this upcoming season? Put it this way. There's a lot I did. There's a lot I didn't do. Bar that. Bar it. You hear me? Bar that. That's you know what I mean? Yeah. That's a good clip. And that's that's how I'm looking at it, bro. Right. My goals that I have for myself haven't been met and I have another opportunity to accomplish it, bro. So yeah. I feel that I do it. You know, do it, just keep working, you know. Right. And I think we got the right team, bro. Like, as a whole. Yeah. I think everyone's more locked in. Like, this is the most I've seen yeah. people working out over here, bro. Yeah, real what? Talk. My old line bro, I caught them one day doing <laughs> sleds, bro, on the field. I never <laughs> seen Like, that. sweating. Yeah. After the workout, they was sitting on the, on the, uh, on the ground like this. <laughs> I'm like, what? Man, you, you, won't see, you didn't see that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, nah. So it's like, and it's everyone, bro. It's, it's, I feel like it's our year. And, you know, we mentioned culture in the beginning of the video, but honing it more to Maryland, like, we got here when it was, man, what? It was rough. No, and we went through, nowhere. nobody wants to work, everybody talks. You can't hold anybody accountable. Right. If you hold somebody accountable, it's Person, back and forth. Person. And, you know, how are you going to win on Saturdays mm-hmm. if, you, if you can't even compete in the right ways? And you see a shift every year and every year. And to your point, like, I feel like this is the team that do it. Like, we got some yeah. young guys. They All they want to do is, yo, can you meet? Can you do this? I'm like, bro. Like, right. but it, when I realized I was one of those kids, like, <laughs> texting Bo, I'm like, bro, like, help me, bro. What are you and, doing? Then, and then what's crazy is, like, <laughs> what are you doing? You, you, you understand how it feels to, like, not have that. Because, like, coming up freshman year, like, I didn't have, like, a guy uh-huh. to be like, yeah, let's go meet. Right. They're like, nah, bro. Like, or, like, they weren't even available for me to speak to them. Now, mm-hmm. you got younger guys, like, I wouldn't call it bugging because it's the right thing to do. But, like, that's how it comes off. Like, dang, bro, like, you always want to meet. But, yeah. like, let's go get more work. Like, it's cool, you know? Right. So, um, that all goes back to culture. Like, he talked, like, he touched on, man, because that's what's going to get us to where we want to go. Oh, definitely. So. We remember how it is. So, of course, we're going to be right there to help them out no matter yeah. what. For real. Right. We was there from, man, we got COVID? here together, boy, COVID. 2020. COVID year. Winter 2020, we all came in uh, together. Yep. I can't COVID was later. different, bro. Yeah, came in a year later. That's a I whole heard, different, yeah. like, boy. I remember, I remember first day, boy, first day workouts, you know, 6 a.m. lift. And we th- we think we done. Go right outside bro. for that. Uh, what's that little pacer test? Yeah, B test. test. Oh my! In the cold, yeah. boy, it was cold. As a <laughs> oh my! That was that was different yeah. back then, though. Bro. We got the team for real. We do with that team. We do. And I think like now that it's like guys from that team, us, yeah, are now older. Now we get to you know really change it, mm-hmm. and I think. You know, cheers to us for that. <laughs> right, bro. No, no cap. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, bro. Just, you know, just transition to some miscellaneous, some quick. Uh, you know, just a couple minutes ago off camera, it was uh, me and Lee was playing chess. And I know you play chess a lot. And, you know, you do a lot of things to get your mind off, you know, football, you know, from time to time. So yeah. just touch on, you know, the game of chess and, like, you know, how it helps you. Or, or if it doesn't help you or if it does, like, just, you know, like, why are you so – adamant about getting the game a day in. Yeah. Um, so my brother, he started, you know, trying to put me on chess, and I was like, nah. But long story short, he put me on chess. And ever since I've been playing it, bro, it's just, I don't know, it's a different feeling, like, when you outsmart someone. Right. You know what I mean? Nah, real time. And it's yeah. like, That's crazy. and the way for chess is, you know, you need to put the king in a position where he can't make a move no more. Right. So where he's trapped. Right. Like, he's totally trapped. And I just like the idea of chess and that, you know, you got to outsmart someone to to win. And I feel like a game a day, you know, kind of help with my decision-making and stuff. Because mm-hmm. chess is kind of like football, you know, one wrong mistake and you get checkmated, bro. Like I said just last like episode, like, you make one move, the opponent got like seven more they can make against yeah. you. Like, it's, it's yeah. really like that. Yeah. Nah, 
Well, I need to get started on that. You know, I'm still learning. My learning phase. Bro, trust is too. Yeah, bro. Sure it's it's a good thing to keep your mind, you know, keep you yourself go. sane. What, are, what other things you do to, like, unplug for real? Like? Bro, I'm really a geek uh, <laughs> on the uh, ukulele, bro. Uh -huh. Like, that's something that uh, up here when I'm in the mainland, even my brother, like, that's us. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. coming from Hawaii, that's, like, one thing that can remind us of home. Every time I pick it up, I could remember my grandma, my both my grandparents. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, just a different... Uh, feeling and it takes my mind off of a game right. you know what I mean right. no, really. and it makes me think of like man, my family like that's all that's really important right. at that moment at nine o'clock you know what I mean right. at night instead of worrying about like I missed that throw like, yeah. you know what I mean I yeah. threw a pick and it's like so <laughs> I always get on FaceTime with my brother like every night mm -hmm. and we just play songs sing talk do whatever and that's what's up. I feel like, you know, as athletes, we struggle with that. Like, we, we can't stay in the moment. We always worrying about that throw, that pick yeah. we drop, that bust of coverage. And, yeah. you know, I was thinking, I was like, yo, right. like, well, I'm always in the line. Like, I'm like, I want to be a regular person some days because it's like you go here, like, oh, what's up, Dante? Like, mm -hmm. Talk about football, X, Y, Z, lacrosse, whatever. I, or my, like, they got on their mind because that's who they see me as. Yeah. And I was like, yo. Leah got it five times worse. He's a quarterback, first of all, and you know he's a good one at that. And it's like I, I want to know like the dark side of being a quarterback. Like, like what are some things you're just like, man. Like I can't have like a regular life. I can't go out. Like you might have to go out with a hoodie on, so people are like, oh, Talia, Talia, let me get a picture. Yeah. Like I know it's crazy. Like I, uh, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, I think it's just different when like. You going like certain uh, occasions and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like when you're going out to a bar, or, like you're going out to clubs, something like that. Just because you want to always protect your image and you know who you are and stuff like that. But uh, at the same time, though, I feel like it's a blessing. You know, I was once that kid. Like, man, I want to picture with Lamar. Like the first time I met Lamar Jackson, bro. I was <laughs> you fair big, boy. So yeah. big, bro. <laughs> like I was sitting on. I was sitting next to the bus. Next to him on the bus, bro, yeah. was at, like, this QB retreat camp. And, like, he just got done shaking everyone at their mom's hand, yeah. taking a picture, you know what I mean? And I'm in the bus. I'm like, should I ask it for a bit? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, but, like, I was once that kid. And, like, the way I see these people come to me, you know, with, like, Leah, how you doing? Like, bro, I can't believe it's you. Or, like, stuff like that. And, like, putting a smile on their face, you know, I think that's the biggest blessing. And... So my dad always tells us, like, you know, sometimes it could get overwhelming with the pictures and especially after games when, you know, you want to see your family or do stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's it's all blessings because it could be taken away like that. That's, that's, that's uh, once point. again, I got another story. <laughs> I'm in the locker room and we just got done lifting. Um, you know, Leah's in my lift group, so we just, we, took, we just got done lifting. Leah's like asking, like, hey, who got a hoodie? Who got a hoodie? I'm like, bro, like, what you need a hoodie for? Like, <laughs> like he's like moving frantically about it. He's like, I gotta go to class, bro. They can't be seeing me. If I, I need a hoodie. I'm like, man, you crazy, bro? You tripping about a hoodie? He ended up taking uh somebody else lift Glenn. shirt. Yeah, Glenn. Glenn. <laughs> it had like another name on it, so like people don't realize like it's him. But it's just crazy, dog. Cause like I said, like you, you always in the limelight, you know, and like everything is you know, circle back to you in some way, you know, when, when you're outside, you know, of the white lines off the field. So, yeah. um, to your point, as far as, like, protecting it, prote protecting your image and just making sure that you always on 10, like, it, that's definitely important, especially being an athlete, and especially holding so much influence, you know, to others, for sure. Yeah. So, and it's hard, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, believe it. waking up every day, you know, there's, obviously, we all make mistakes. Right. And there's certain things you want to do and you want to, you know, be with your friends and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, all hard work and, you know, everything comes with a price. Right. The so. reward the reward for hard work is more hard work. So, that, <laughs> yeah. that, that's always that's always what it's been, you know? So, yeah. no it's doubt. It's a blessing, though. It's always See, a blessing. It's, it's a always blessing. a blessing. It's always <laughs> I'm blessing. glad you keep putting into that, that mindset and, you know, like, kind of, you know, impacted me right now. Because it's like, I get in those modes where I'm like, bro, like, 
if a coach asks me like something about a sport or something, I'm like, but you ain't asked me nothing about me yet. Yeah. I can be struggling coaching. Mm-hmm. All you cared about is we got installed today. Make sure the rest of the safeties know it is. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'll text, Ru- I'll text Rube, I'll text Bo, and I'm like, are oh, you straight? Like this occasion, like this message, they're like. What up, bro? Like, what do you want? <laughs> like, I'm just trying, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's cool, but I just want to make sure that I'm checking on you because, you know, it's hard. Like, this mental health stuff nowadays is, is rough. And it's like, you know, that's why I even asked you because I feel strongly about the topic. I'm like, bro, like, we, we known as Dante Trader plays football, whatever. And it's like, is that all I'm known for? Is that when you have a conversation with me, it's like, you don't even ask me how I'm doing, like, without that. Mm-hmm. And, like, I could be struggling. You know what I'm saying? But and it's not only fans. It could be a professor. Right. It could be a... It could be anyone. Right. Like, like you said, sometimes you just want to be a normal person, bro. Just treat me regular. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just be cool. It's tough, um, man. It's, it's different, so... No, for real. No. Um, Michael, you got it. Uh, you. But, but, yeah, um... You know, another another topic I kind of want to touch on. You know, going going back, you said you mentioned about you ain't want to be like Hollywood or anything like that. Like, do you ever is that a misconception about I want to say QBs or like yourself? Like, you know, like because you're a quarterback. Like, yeah. Hollywood. Do you, you, you know? mm-hmm. I just uh, growing up, I just seen you know a lot of that. Like, people thought they were too good for certain people. And I, I, that just wasn't me. And I feel like, uh, and it's something I was always, like, you know, brought up with. Uh, even with my cousins, the ones I didn't want to hang out with, I can't act like I don't know them in front of, you know what I mean? Like, stuff like that. But I just feel like, you know, that's not for me. Those type of people is uh, not my type. You know, I try not to hang around with people like that. So I don't become like that. But, yeah, I just don't want to be that. I just want to be... Myself, you know, and I feel like being humble and uh, not being Hollywood, like not being like too good for people, is the the way to go about things. Because so, you never you, know what people can yeah. do for you, bro. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you one hundred percent on that point because um, the game of football, like football, is a platform, bro. Like yeah. it's not who we are. It's like mm-hmm. like that's not our life. Like we don't depend on that. But yeah. what football does for us, it helps us reach others that. You probably couldn't reach, you know, just, you know, doing, you know, other things. Yeah. Like, we were blessed with a gift, and people love watching us perform and watch it, and, and they're inspired by that. So, to hear you say, you know, that your approach is to always stay humble, and, you know, you use the game of football as a blessing to inspire others, like, like that's my biggest motto, and, you know, I know that's yours as well, because that's what it's about at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, it's about using the game as a platform to really – reach others, but on another level, um, other than just, you know, players and fans. Yeah. Like, it's, like it's, it's really about impacting. And yes, sir. Like, like, like that, that, that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. And going off of that point, like, having an impact, you know, credits to your why. And I just want to open the floor, like, what's each other's why? Is like, why do y'all do what y'all do? Why do y'all, you know, stand to this standard or, you know, solidify yourself as a, what type of person? Like, why do you do what you do? Like, you know, anybody? You, you want to? I mean, I think I think my biggest why is really, like, like the opportunity that's at hand. Um, you know, every day is an opportunity. And opportunity never goes away. It just moves to the next person. So whenever I'm presented with an opportunity, whether it's, you know, waking up in the morning, that's an opportunity. Or, um you know, making a play, that's an opportunity. Um, just doing a good deed for somebody, that's an opportunity. Like, it, it's just always, you're always going to be put in, in, in position to make a difference in somebody's life. And how you go about it is what's going to determine your, your legacy, your destiny, uh, your fate. Um, and then, you know, just having faith and, and moving and literally moving like, you know, today can be your last day. And, and just doing everything to, everything to your fullest. Like, that's my why. Just, you know, the opportunity um, that I gain every day, that I'm blessed with every day. Mm-hmm. So I'll say that. Gotcha. Um, you know, my why, you know, I don't really, I haven't told many people my why. I told less than a handful of people my why. And that's mainly because, like, I keep it to myself, but also I feel like 
you know, some people you don't even tell that because they're going to try to use it in some type of way. Yeah. But, you know, my wife, for real, is, like, one of my, like, my future, like, family, for real. Like, when I, when I have kids and stuff, like, that's what I do this stuff for. Like, I'm doing this, like, football stuff, you know, to, like, be the best, but also, like, to make all that bread so I can spoil my kids and do whatever, you feel me? Right. Like, that's, what, that's what I care about. Like, oh, no day, like, yeah. Yeah. You know, that's why, like, when coaches or someone might say, you know, he think he, he thought he made it, he thinks he's made it now, I'm like, that's not like I'm not chilling or nothing. Like, I'm not doing that. Like I still ain't go nowhere yet. Like I still haven't done nothing. So at the end of the day, whether it's football or I got a you know good job, you know I do all this stuff for like my future family and stuff. You feel me? For yeah. Sure. Man, big trader. <laughs> big trade. Um, my why? I mean, I mentioned it on one of the earlier podcasts is the younger generation. Um, I know as you can hear, like Talia, Talia, like they want to after the games. You you make sure you. Signing stuff, you, you autograph and everything, talking, taking pictures and everything. Um, but I got a little brother, um, and he means the world to me. He looks up to me, and it's like, you know, he needed somebody that's tangible to text or call or yeah. go to the games because when we were all younger, we all searched for those type of guys. Like, when I was younger, I, I could turn on the TV and watch Kobe or – you know, Ed Reed, but you couldn't necessarily talk to them. Yeah. And and it's like when you see this following, you're like, yo, like it's it's bigger than me. Yeah. Like it's really bigger than me. Mm-hmm. Like so when you lose that game at the end of the in the game, again, like I said to these boys, like them kids do not care. Like they they just wanna see you. They happy that they got to see you. And that pushes me, like I'm like, my brother like he keeps me going. He loved the game just like I did. Like when I was young, I see my myself in him, and it's on a broader spectrum. All these kids, like they bring joy to my heart. Like honestly, to you know, keep going and put on a show for these kids. And, like you know, other people have different whys. You know, that's to them. Like could be family losses, could be family, like money. This whatever it motivates them. You know, credit to them. But you know, the younger generation for me. The future. Yeah, I think. Uh... Mine is probably my parents. Um, just growing up, seeing the uh, the sacrifices, you know that the struggles we have to go through, and uh, we have to go through a lot. You know, making the decision to leave Hawaii and to go to Alabama to play high school. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that they they had to sacrifice. I think during that time we left, my grandma she was she had cancer, so. It was so, it was crazy how, like, everything happened. And my parents just always seen something we never seen. And now, like, me and my brother are up to this point. Uh, it's all about taking care of them and making sure they're good, making sure my sister's good. Like, my brother, he got a son now. So, you know, making sure, like you said, like, our families here, uh, are, are straight. And that's why, you know, I'm here. I want to have a legacy that my kids can see and my kids can come here and, you know, say that's their dad and right. stuff right. like that. So really making my parents happy and taking care of them and, like both said, taking care of my family, future family. Yeah. That's our brother. That's real. That's, that's, real. that's uh-huh. good by everybody. <laughs> that's everybody. Hey. Hey. But, like, you got to think, like, that's kind of, like, first thing we kind of say when we're younger, like, when we dream the dreams, like, we gonna get here so we can what? Take care of mom, buy right. my house, get take care of your kids, and it's like, yo, like when that first paycheck hit, I'm gonna like slide a little, you know what I mean? Slide <laughs> something mom, pop mom, loose because like, oh, well, like got to two two pop in this song. No way you can pay you back, you know what I'm saying? But you can show you that I understand, right. you gotta appreciate it. Right. Like right. I can't never repay you back for never. all the things you did, like all the stress, never, all the times you, we, you know. Bills wasn't paid, and we sitting there all together. Ain't no price on that. Like, all that. And you can just see in their face the toll it taken, and they'll sacrifice their well-being for you. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I can see why you say your family and your parents, and it's like, a motivated mom or dad by their kids will do anything. So the way to pay them back, get get on that field. <laughs> right, yeah, right. And, and do work. Yeah, go get your money. <laughs> whatever, it take, sure. whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Well, shoot, you know, we always end 
on the one speed questions. And, you know, we got to. We got to get you the question. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to give you a question. Yeah. And you just answer as much as you can. We can have some, you know, debate about it. Just mix it up. It don't matter. Fast, like, answer fast. It, nah, you can. You I don't know what I'm saying. Easy. All right. Favorite sports movie? Sports movie. The greatest game of all time. Okay. All right. One must have idol. Must have idol. <laughs> Pouch. <laughs> show, hey, show the cam the pouch, man. The crossbody. Pouch. Hey, this crossbody is big fashion coming up. Bless. Max nice Holloway. Bless him, man. Know that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. If you do, favorite female artist if you listen to. You know what I'm saying? It be ever type. Hmm. That's hard. Yeah, you can't. The queen. Just go with the queen. Beyonce. Okay, there. That's good. I'm mean, a Nicki Hold up. <laughs> hey, what's your favorite Beyonce song? Though? Not to put you on the spot. Beyonce, uh, shoot, she has a lot of great songs. A lot of them. Great. Tonight I'm gonna dance. Oh, nah, fam. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, y'all ever heard "Before I Let Go"? Yeah. Yo, that joint, man. Like that's like a barbecue song. Cookout, man. <laughs> yeah. You know? All right. Hit that two step, we good. <laughs> Always. Hey, uh, biggest animal you think you could kill with your bare hands? Lord. Biggest animal. Man, y'all Samoan strong. Oh, pig. Tripping. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's okay. Pig. Take down I'm a pig. A pig, animal. though, like... Like a, like a hog type? Nah, like... Like a, a hog or like a pig? Like a pink one. A okay. Pig. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, then. Okay, then. Okay, then. Okay, then. <laughs> Keep it cool. Type. All right. Usually the last question get a little controversial. You know, that's cool. Stranded at, would you rather be stranded at in space or stranded in sea? Sea. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because, bro. like, the sea, bro, you can, you have food, you have water, bro. You stranded, buddy. Space, you done. Boy. You done. You you done. Done. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, bro, I ain't gonna lie. I might have to go with space because, like, in the sea, bro, I do not know what's in that water, yeah, bro. Yeah, he's the tripping on the play with He's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look. No, I feel like you got yeah. more of a risk at dying, too, though. Bro, in I, sea. Man, space, you can just get it over with, then. Space, you're you going to die. Take the helmet off. Everything. Like, <laughs> see, bro, I'm going to be, bro, I'm going to be too scared, bro. <laughs> bro, you just can't see what's under. Yeah. But that's why, like, like, like to that point, like, it's going to come a time where, like, I'm going to be, I'm going to, like, practice to be an animal tamer. Tame every animal. Like, I'm going to do that. Because, like, you never know, bro. We could be underwater, like, tomorrow. They going to eat your... Nah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get right. <laughs> I'm going to get right. I'm going to get right. Well, I don't care what animal I see out there. I'm going to get right. If I even see a blue whale, I'll faint. Bro. Man, I have no fear. <laughs> that blue is big. You got what? I have no fear. If it's about time, it's about time. But at least I'm going to try. You understand? Like, we good. We cool. We bro, good. if I was to put a great white shark, man, a hungry great white shark, man, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done, Brody. But so why are we not going to space? Like I don't understand. Nah, I, bro, nah bro. Like, nah, can't do space. Space ain't it, though. Bro, we don't know either of them. Like, there's a reason why you know NASA started in in the ocean. There's a reason why bro, they left, and they only know five percent of the ocean. And y'all want us to be stranded at sea, bro? Y'all crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Bro. That is conspiracy theory, man. We can. I'm gonna be strong as heck in that, in that, in that water. Getting that, getting, yeah. I'm gonna find land. Aquaman, that's right. I'm gonna find land, boy. <laughs> yeah, you crazy. Yeah, all right. yeah, 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 the boy's gonna be dead. <laughs> you ain't gonna find Rude. <laughs> RIP Rude. Okay. But um, before we close, man, um, any shout outs we wanna give out to the people? Uh, Shout out to y'all, man. Yeah. Like, Appreciate y'all for having me on here, bro. Always, man. Big love. You know what I'm saying? I know this thing's going to go get get bigger and bigger. You know that. You know? But whatever y'all do, because y'all harder workers than me, bro. Y'all always getting me right in the weight room. Y'all always making me feel like I'm not doing enough. You know what I mean? With staying back watching film after practice and stuff like that, bro. So I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Shout out to the men out there. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just wanna, just wanna, we wanna give you your flowers, bro. Like, cause like, I know you know you're very humble, um, you know, very you know, family oriented, team oriented, but, um, you know, you don't realize a lot of things because you're you, 
And, like, you don't see what we see on the outside. Like, bro, like, the time you put in and, and what you do for us as a, as a family, bro, I think uh, shouldn't go unnoticed. So, I, so you know, we just want to give you your flowers, bro, yeah. with that because, you know, you, you definitely one of them guys that made the biggest impact um, for us, bro. Not only the program, but in our lives, bro. Like, we like we gained a brother in you for sure. So, yes, definitely appreciate you, Woody, for sure. That. Appreciate yeah. you, bro. Already, bro. Know that. Know that, fam. Yes, <laughs> Know that. Yes, I am. Man, appreciate all y'all for tuning in. Yeah, we out. That's sweet.